people are weird. I get that. But there are some things people do on a cruise that I just don't understand why they do it. And today, I've got my list of these things up next. Hey, everyone. It's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. And I get that there will always be things that someone doesn't personally care for on a cruise, right? We're all just different kind of people, as John Legend once said. And, you know, there are things that we don't personally care for, but others may enjoy. As an example, there are late night club parties, right? And I'm just not into the whole oops, oops, oops scene, but I recognize that's just me and lots of people like having a hopping party atmosphere. And similarly, like while the flow rider looks like a face plant waiting to happen, I know there's lots of people who really enjoy giving it a go and they definitely have a great time up until they probably wipe out. But then there are some things that I see people doing on a cruise and I truly have no idea why. I'm not one to call someone out on it. After all, if they enjoy it, more power to them. But these are things that I think are simply not worth your time or money at all. And I've got my reasons why. So today I'm sharing my list of things people do on a cruise that I just don't know why they're bothering to do them at all. First up on my list are free charms. Now, this is something you could either do on board a cruise ship or in the ports you visit, but it is not uncommon to see an advertisement for, hey, come into this particular shop and we'll give you a free charm. These are charms you put on a charm bracelet. You can collect them and they are truly free. That's not false advertising. You go into these stores, you get a little tchotchke that you can put on your charm bracelet. Cool. These attract a certain clientele, I guess, of people who are coming in purely for the free charms, but you have to question why they're giving you free charms because nothing in this world is free. And that is because you're about to enter a high sales pressure pitch scenario. And to me, I don't care what they're giving away for free in that situation. It's just not worth it. First and foremost, the charms you're getting are pretty much worthless. Okay. I know some people do that because they want to like bring me be back a souvenir for a child back home, right? Oftentimes I'll say, oh, I've got a daughter, a granddaughter, a niece who, you know, thinks this might be great. And I'm going to go with these three charms. I don't mind saying no, thanks. Okay. I would probably say your time is worth something to you. Second of all, I don't want to be in a situation where you go in there and to these shops and have to look these persons in the eye and pretend to hear what they're giving you with their whole spiel. I just don't think it's worth it. I think you're better off spending a few bucks on a souvenir for that aforementioned daughter, granddaughter, niece, and just buying something for them. It's the thought that counts. And in this case, subjugating yourself to the high sales pressure situations you're going to be getting into in order to get one of these free charms just isn't worth it. Not to mention, of course, if you're doing this on shore and shore excursions, there's way better things to do than going, you know, shopping for not buying anything, but just to pick up free charms. I, I just not my cup of tea personally. Next up and kind of along the similar lines are art auctions. I've talked about this on other videos as well. The art auctions are something that are still done on, on Royal Caribbean cruise ships. I don't understand why you would want to do this, but people do it. I think number one, actually the reason why they do it is for the free champagne. But the other reason is obviously to pick up pieces of art. And there's nothing wrong with collecting art. I'm not here to say you shouldn't have any fine art in your house or enjoy fine art. I just don't think art auctions are the place to do it on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. The reason why is art auctions have a notoriously terrible reputation on board cruise ships. These are run by third-party companies. And unfortunately, a lot of people end up feeling duped by it for a variety of reasons. Number one, it takes like forever for you to get the actual art. The art you bid on on board the ship is not actually the art you take home. They ship it to you later on. Second of all, the valuations are questionable and highly subjective. So my point is that a lot of times people will report back that they bid on a particular piece because there was a valuation or a suggestion perhaps that there was a valuation of a certain price and then they got home and they got it appraised and it wasn't anything near there, what have you. You know, there's nothing wrong with buying art because you think, you know what, that piece of art is going to look great on our living room wall. That's a great reason to buy art. And I would argue you could buy art like that almost anywhere from a lot of places. I just don't get the appeal of the art auction. And kind of like the, the free charms, if you're going in for the free champagne they're giving you, again, you're entering into a scenario in which, in this case, you're being inebriated to possibly be considering purchasing this and cost you a lot of money. So for that reason, I don't get art auctions. Next up is something I feel very strongly about, and that are hotel shuttles. So a very common question I get on a Royal Caribbean blog is, hey, Matt, I'm going on a cruise on this ship out of this city. Can you recommend a great hotel that has a shuttle that brings me to the port terminal on the day of the cruise? That's like a very 
reasonable question. And I bet you there are some folks that are wondering, where's Matt going with this? I think this is a really legitimate question. And the reason is, I think hotel shuttles are awful. And the reason why I'm not a big fan of shuttles, number one, you're limiting yourself to the amount of hotels you can choose from because you're saying, I only want a hotel with a shuttle. Number two, when you go with a hotel that has a shuttle, whether it is complimentary or not, you're traveling on someone else's schedule. So that means there are slots you can book, and that means waiting around at your hotel in order to go to the cruise, not when you're ready, but when they're ready for you. Number three, there will be other people that are going to be competing with you. And in some hotels, there's not a reservation system. It is simply first come, first serve. And I have seen lines, I've seen delays, and I've seen a lot of people having to wait for more than one shuttle. So for those reasons, I'm not a fan of them. Instead, I would say, find the best hotel you can find at the best price you can find, and then take Lyft and Uber. If you're limiting yourself to hotels that have a free shuttle, it ain't free. You're paying for it in your fare of your hotel. Along those lines, I'm going to extend this and give you a bonus one, and that is park and stay packages. Oy vey. Park and stay packages are when you book a hotel room and it includes being able to park your car at the hotel instead of at the cruise terminal. Sounds like another great idea. Yeah, and I think once upon a time, like 10, 15 years ago, these actually were deals. But the hotels have all figured this out. Number one, very few hotels offer it anymore. Number two, the ones that do offer them, when you ever do the math on paying for that elevated rate, and of course the parking is going to cost you extra on top of that, compared to parking at the terminal, just not worth it. I'm a big fan of parking at the cruise terminal because number one, it's convenient. At the end of your cruise, you just want to get off the ship, get on your car, and drive on home. The last thing you want to be doing is waiting for a shuttle and trying to organize times and compete with other people. You just want to get in your car and go. Number two, along the same reasons I don't like the hotel shuttles, is the park and stay packages. You're limiting yourself to a very few amount of hotels. So you're passing up much better deals on potentially much better hotels that you'd be perfectly comfortable at. And again, the difference paying for that park and stay rate versus getting the best hotel rate you could possibly get, paying to park at the terminal, I think it's worthwhile to go with the other option. And again, you want to get that best hotel you can possibly get at the best rate you can get. And I just don't think the hotels that offer either shuttles or park and stay packages are worth it because you're paying a premium for it. They know it and they're charging you for it. Ain't nothing free in this world. And that includes shuttles. So don't limit yourself to just those hotels. Use Uber and Lyft if you're truly concerned about getting to the port terminal. You know, it's just the way to go. I do it every single time. That way you travel on your schedule and you're going to do so at a really reasonable rate. So there you go. There's my reasons for not liking the hotel shuttles and park and say packages. Next up is someone who refuses to do online check-in. Okay, I understand some people are not technically savvy or enjoy using technology to that extent, but this idea of I'm just going to simply do check-in the old-fashioned way because I can and I refuse to use anything technology, I don't understand that either. Like I said, there are people that don't appreciate or want to use their phones or computers during a cruise. That's totally fine. That's how you want a vacation. Nothing wrong with that. But there are people who flat out refuse you to online check-in and simply show up to the cruise terminal the old-fashioned way. Yeah, that's right. They show up, they go to the check-in desk and spend a whole lot of time wasting their time doing check-in at that point. The online check-in is incredibly easy. And I'm going to argue, number one, anyone who's possibly watching this video right now could certainly benefit from this because you clearly have a, some sort of a idea of how to use the internet and, and whatnot, but totally skipping all the online check-in options via Roker means website before the cruise is a mistake. If you want to do everything and then put your phone away when you get on board the ship, that's totally fine in my opinion, but refusing to do it all together, I think is a huge mistake. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, if you're thinking who does this, Matt, a lot of people do this. I'll see this in comments all the time that you know, for this many years, I've been doing it this way. I'm not doing the online check. You don't have to do it this way. You don't have to do anything, but it's really to your disadvantage. And you're just pitting yourself behind the eight ball for no particular reason out of spite, if you ask me. So for those reasons, I don't understand people who don't want to do online check-in. And the last thing that people do on a cruise that I don't understand why they do it, and I have no tolerance for this at all is anyone who's disrespecting a crew member on board. The crew members are extremely hardworking and whether you agree with them or not, it is not your place to ever disrespect them by yelling at them, berating them, or otherwise really lashing out at crew members in any way. If you have a problem with a crew member or you have a problem with what the crew member is telling you, take a step back and say, okay, I need to speak to a supervisor or manager, escalate it, take it where it should be. 
But berating a frontline worker is not the way to go. It is not cool. I don't care how much money you paid to go on your vacation. That is not an excuse to act like a jerk to these people. They're hardworking. They're, in many cases, simply trying to enforce the rules that, by the way, you agreed to in that cruise contract that you probably didn't read, but you agreed to them when you went on that ship. So make sure you understand what is going on there. But more importantly, it's not the crew member who came up with the rule or is simply applying the rule just to you. It is the way it is, and you've got to go with the flow. And if you have an issue with it, again, that's that's okay. Make sure you bring it to the right channels to address and do it in a calm and respectful manner, chief among all of those things. So there you have it. The things that people do on a cruise that I don't understand why they do them at all. I truly try to come up with a list of things that I can't possibly see why you'd want to do it. Unlike, again, going to a club, flow rider, other things that some people care for, but others do not. In this situation, I've got my list of things that I just simply don't think anybody should be doing, and I question why they'd be doing it in the first place. Let me know in the comments, is there anything that you think I missed, or do you disagree with me on any of these? I'm sure there's a couple people who love those hotel shuttles and free charms, but I'm telling you, don't do it! If you like this video, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, and also hit that little bell icon below this video, so that way YouTube lets you know when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.